There is absolutely nothing wrong with pushing the envelope, especially when it comes to video games. Innovation and risk-taking have given us a smorgasbord of gaming classics over the years, from groundbreaking mechanics in the likes of Portal to the philosophical questions posed by games like Bioshock and the narrative excellence of titles such as Silent Hill 2 and The Last of Us. Sometimes, however, developers just go way, way too far. Whether it's unscrupulous business practices, sensor and sensing gameplay, or ill-advised technological developments, occasionally these companies massively overstep the mark. For the crimes against gaming in this list, the developers in question definitely need to sit in the naughty corner and have a good long think about what they've done. Fair warning, there's some pretty heavy subject matter coming up, so those of a sensitive disposition might want to look away now, but please don't because we really want you to watch our videos. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 times game developers went too far. Number 10. Rockstar. GTA San Andreas's Hot Coffee. There are a plethora of examples from the Grand Theft Auto series alone that could have landed Rockstar on this list, and spoiler alert, this isn't the only time we'll hear from them in this video, but Hot Coffee sure does take the biscuit. For those of you who are blissfully unaware, Hot Coffee is a piece of disabled gameplay in the console versions of GTA San Andreas. When ported over to PC, however, a fan-made mod allowed the minigame to be accessed, and players were shocked at what the gameplay entailed. In the unmodified version, if protagonist CJ accepts a cup of coffee at the end of an evening from his date, the player sees only an external shot of the girlfriend's house while CJ uh, gets down to business. With this mod, however, players enter the room with CJ and, well, get involved, controlling the character's moves in the same way they do dancing in other parts of the game. Naturally, parents, the media, and even Senator Hillary Clinton were outraged, with one grandmother even filing a lawsuit against Rockstar after purchasing the game for her 14-year-old grandson, alleging that the developer was guilty of deception, false advertising, fraud, and abuse. I mean, no 14-year-old should play that game anyway, but I don't think it stopped many of us. Ultimately, the game's US rating was raised from mature to adults only, and it was recalled by Rockstar, though, of course, some copies are still out there to this day. Number 9. EA – The Star Wars Battlefront 2 Loot Box Scandal Let's be honest, it's widely acknowledged that EA is to fair and moral business practices what Kanye West is to being down-to-earth and unpretentious, but the loot box scandal surrounding the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2 really was a new low. Loot boxes in games aren't a new concept, with a number of big titles, such as Blizzard's Overwatch, employing the same mechanic to reward players with cosmetic items, such as character skins and dialogue. So although they may cost real-world dollary dues, there's no in-game benefit to be had from their purchase. What EA did with Battlefront 2, however, was insert items into loot boxes that gave players a gameplay advantage. As the boxes could be purchased with real money, the developers effectively tipped the scales in favour of players who were willing to spend their hard-earned cash on crates, much to the chagrin of those who were unable or unwilling. Following much public outcry, EA removed the non-cosmetic items from the crates and stopped selling them to players, so they could only be earned through completing milestones and challenges within the game. Unfortunately, however, the damage was already done, and despite Battlefront 2 now being a solid entry in the extensive library of Star Wars video games, the title is largely remembered only for the aforementioned scandal. Number 8. Team Ninja – Dead or Alive Extreme 3's Voyeurism in VR Virtual reality, or VR if you're hip and cool about this, is viewed by some as the future of video gaming, and by others as a fast track to an upset tummy. But one title that has caused nausea amongst gamers for an entirely different reason is Dead or Alive Extreme 3. Although not the most well-publicized controversy on this list, it's certainly one of the more stomach-turning. The game itself focuses on beach sports such as volleyball and a uh, butt battle? Honestly, I have no idea. Even before its foray into the world of VR, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 was already criticised of bordering on creepy for its depiction of women as objects existing solely for the gratification of players. Once it made the jump into virtual reality, however, it went from creepy to downright violating. Players are able to use the VR functionality to fully objectify the female characters, at times having them pose in skimpy outfits while the player is free to get as up close and personal as they wish. Naturally, this caused some controversy in the media, with some critics going as far to accuse the game of promoting rape culture. I don't know about you, but after looking at that, I don't think there's enough soap in the world to ever make me feel clean again. Number 7. 
Midway Games, extreme violence in Mortal Kombat. We've all been there. One minute you're pottering about, minding your own business, and the next you've created a video game so violent that it's deemed necessary to form a whole new content rating system. Round the office we call it a standard Peter Austin Thursday afternoon. Believe it or not, back in 1992 the world was a far more sensitive place and clearly wasn't ready for Liu Kang, Sub-Zero or Johnny Cage to begin their ultra-violent antics. Of course, the game was a triumph in the arcade fighting genre and has spawned no less than 10 sequels and a plethora of spin-off titles as well as several films, TV shows and comic books. But the way hasn't always been easy for Mortal Kombat, with its original release coming under fire for the levels of violence it contained. Several lawsuits levelled at the title ultimately paved the way for the introduction of the ESRB game rating system in the US in 1994. Additionally, even as recently as the release of MK11 in 2019, many countries continue to ban Mortal Kombat games outright for their depiction of graphic violence, with Indonesia, China and Japan amongst those who do not allow the games across their borders. But don't feel too bad for Mortal Kombat, because despite all of this, it still remains one of the most popular franchises in video game history, so Christmas bonuses all round! Number 6. Blizzard – Diablo Immortal Announcement not being video game developers ourselves, we at Triple Jump can only imagine how good it must feel to take to the stage to announce a hotly anticipated sequel and for the audience to react to the news with gasps, whoops and rapturous applause. Sadly for them, the good people at 2018's BlizzCon also do not know how that feels. When principal game designer Wyatt Cheng took to the stage on that fateful November day, attendees were expecting to hear an announcement pertaining to the much sought after sequel to 2012's Diablo 3 but were left with nothing but disappointment when mobile game Diablo Immortal was offered up instead. One fan even went as far as to question if the revelation was an out of season's April Fool's joke. Ouch. As if the disenchantment of long-term fans was not enough, following the reveal of Diablo Immortal, Blizzard stocks took an immediate 7% hit, the cinematic trailer garnered nearly 25 times as many dislikes as likes on the developer's YouTube channel, and at the time of recording, the game still doesn't have a planned release date. Clearly Blizzard learned their lesson in regards to giving people what they want, however, as they went on to announce Diablo 4 at BlizzCon 2019. Aww. I do love a happy ending. Freedom for Hong Kong, by the way, never forget. Number 5. Traffic Games – The JFK Assassination Simulator Depicting real-life tragedies in fictional media is always a bit of a minefield. Some actually work, for example movies like Titanic and Schindler's List, and some games such as Battlefield 1 manage to depict their respective historical events in such a way so as to cause minimal offence and distress to those affected by what actually happened. But then there's stuff like JFK Reloaded. Pitched to audiences as a historical piece of educational media and received by them as nothing more than a Lee Harvey Oswald simulator, the game came under fire – no pun intended – for seemingly glorifying the assassination of the 35th President of the United States. Among its critics were Democrat Senator Joe Lieberman, who claimed to be sickened by the game, and brother of the late President Senator Ted Kennedy, who described it, unsurprisingly, as despicable. In spite of the backlash, however, the game holds a reasonably respectable score of 69 nice, on Metacritic, with reviewers noting that the simulation is quite compelling when viewed on its own, but that the game is lacking in the taste department. You will excuse me though if I don't immediately run out and buy a copy. Number 4. Monolith Productions protagonist's sexual assault in Fear 2. It's long been debated as to whether depictions of sexual violence have any place in video games, with titles such as 2013's Tomb Raider receiving massive backlash for even suggesting such themes within their gameplay. With this in mind, it isn't difficult to see why Fear 2 caused such a stir among some players upon its release. Towards the end of the game, protagonist Michael Beckett is attacked by undead psychic Alma Wade, who, having decided that she wants to conceive a baby, violates Beckett in the most horrific way imaginable. It is clear that Michael has not consented to the act, and to add insult to injury when he comes round from his hallucination, Alma is quite clearly pregnant, confirming horrified players' suspicions about the nature of the assault. Although the scene is not overtly graphic, it makes for incredibly uncomfortable, stomach-turning viewing, and definitely raises questions as to whether or not it was really necessary in the context of the wider game. Number 3. Microsoft – Always Online DRM Oh, Microsoft, you sure did screw the pooch on this one, didn't you? 
prior to the release of the Xbox One back in 2013, Microsoft announced that the console would, in a bid to prevent video game piracy, require gamers to connect to the internet once every 24 hours. This meant that purchased games would be rendered useless even in offline modes if the player hadn't connected their Xbox to the internet that day. To add further insult to injury, Microsoft also announced that they would be imposing restrictions on reselling and lending games. As you can imagine, this went down incredibly well. It, no, it didn't. Fans were absolutely outraged by these revelations, taking to the internet to decry the functionality or lack thereof, and causing Microsoft to perform a complete 180 within days, assuring players that they were scrapping the idea of always online and also that they would be able to trade and lend their games to their heart's content. Unfortunately, this was seen by some as too little too late, and although Microsoft refuses to disclose the number of Xbox One units sold, to date it is estimated that the PS4 outsells it by at least 2 to 1. Hopefully they've learned their lesson. Number 2. Rockstar, again, extreme violence in Manhunt and Manhunt 2. You remember a few entries ago when I said hot coffee took the biscuit when it comes to controversial moments in video games? Well, if that was seizing the proverbial baked goods, then Rockstar's Manhunt series not only pilfered the hobnob but held it at gunpoint, punched its dog, and peed in its shoes for good measure. Yes, we've seen extreme violence in a number of games over the years, with everything from Mortal Kombat to GoldenEye for the N64 upsetting concerned parents to some degree, but until its release back in 2003, no mainstream video game had ever celebrated and encouraged committing atrocities quite like Manhunt did. Both games in the series expect the player to carry out stealth executions, rewarding players for committing more brutal slayings by rating them, though Manhunt 2 did have to remove this feature from the console version in order to obtain a mature rating in the United States. Along with its sequel, Manhunt remains banned or rating refused in several countries around the world and was even alleged to have been a contributing factor in the murder of a 14-year-old boy by his 17-year-old friend in the United Kingdom, the former's parents claiming that the latter was obsessed with the game which drove him to commit the horrific crime. This was, of course, fervently rejected by Rockstar and later ruled out by police as the motivation for the attack, though it still remains a massive stain on the developer's permanent record. Number 1. Infinity Ward – Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's Airport Massacre Another example of video games being blamed for real-world violence is 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The level in question, known to players as No Russian, depicts CIA agent Joseph Allen taking part in the massacre of civilians in a Russian airport whilst infiltrating a terrorist group. The player can choose whether or not to participate in the murder of civilians, however intervening by attacking the terrorists will result in their retaliation, and they must engage with the soldiers after exiting the airport or they will fail the level. The mission was accused by the media of contributing to several real-life incidents, including the 2011 Demodiadova International Airport bombing and the 2011 Norway attacks, and was held up by some as an example of a terrorist training tool. The scene ended up being removed from several international versions of the game, altered in others so that players would fail the mission if they attacked any civilians, and resulted in Modern Warfare 2 receiving high content ratings in countries where it wasn't censored. But the philosophical question remains as to whether or not depicting such violence against civilians was truly necessary in this instance, or whether it was gratuitously included for the sake of shock value. And that's our list. What other examples are there of developers taking things that bit too far? Let us know about them in the comments down below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.